Hallelujah. How's everybody doing this morning? It is so good to see everyone today. How many of you really feel blessed this morning? Amen. God is awesome. We are so excited to be here today. I just want to say this before you take your seat, that before this weekend, you got something awesome coming your way. So, since if you really believe that and you expect it, just for 30 seconds, I want you to praise God in advance for what's already coming. I'm going to give you a second because this blessing got your name on it. This ain't no cliche. You got something coming your way. So you might as well just give God praise for what's already heading in your direction. It's not coming to my house. It's coming to your house. God don't mix up that. He know that this one is for you. This one is for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please take your seat. We are about to hear from the Lord this morning. I am so happy to be here with my amazing church family. I tell you, God has been doing some awesome things. Oh, my Lord. Y'all look so blessed out there. <laughs> so listen, um, I, I do have a, uh, a package that I got to deliver to you today. This package is from heaven. And I'm just a delivery guy, so I came here on UPS, Amazon, FedEx, one of them. I'm working for, <laughs> one of them sent me with your package today. But the person who sending the package is God. And so I know that what you got today is going to be awesome. And many of you have been praying and asking God for some answers. And I pray today's teaching is going to give you that answer. And remember, I'm just a delivery guy. So I, I haven't talked to any of you. I don't know what any of you have been talking to your, uh, to your savior in private. But uh, I'm at the place in my life now where if I have to share anything, I always ask the Holy Spirit, I said, what is it that you want them to have? as opposed to what do I want to speak. Right. It's two different things. Because I have a lot of things I, can, I would like to share, but that, been, that can benefit me, but not you. But when it's something for you, guess what? I don't even know the details. My job is just to deliver the package. You, you know how those guys do when they drop off your package at the back door? The box be all broken and stuff? Oh, no, Lord Jesus, help us. <laughs> and, you look up, and you look on your little security camera, and you see them tip it to the van. And then you bring your item to the house, the box, the tape all bust. Hey, the delivery guy like, listen, I don't know what's in that box. My job is just to drop it off. So I'm about to drop off something for you today, and I know it's going to be a blessing to you. So before I get started, I first want to give honor to God to Bishop Sanders. Let's give honor to God for our amazing pastor. <laughs> pastor Sanders, I know you're watching. We love you so much. This church is excited for you. They love you so much, and thank you for uh, allowing me to be in your pulpit, because I know that um, you, if, for you to trust me in your pulpit, then you must think I can do something. Because you don't let everybody in your pulpit, so thank you, sir. <laughs> and, um, and for those who don't know, he is um, at our Holy Convocation, and so he will be returning. So he, he asked me to inform everyone and those who are online to please log in on Wednesday night for prayer and Bible study. He is still going to be continuing this, the, the teaching series that he has been on. And so God is going to do some great things. And we just give God praise for him. First Lady Sanders, we love you as well. Let's give God a praise for First Lady as well. So we thank God, too. I thank God for uh, uh, Minister Eric. Let's give him a uh, hand praise for blessing us this morning. Thank God for our musicians over there who always uh, just bless us with creating an atmosphere. So. Um, before I do share this, I do thank God for my amazing, beautiful wife and the, and right there the, in the back. We love you so much. My life has gotten so much better because of her, and I thank God for her so much. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> she is such a gift, a gift, a gift, a gift from God. So listen, those of you online, I, 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 I'm telling you, you, you know, be expecting your package by, by this weekend. And... It's, it's amazing because I, when I tell you now, we are so in the last days that 
Anybody in here who still think that you got time? Something wrong. You know, you, I mean, it, this thing is so real at this point. All these years you've been hearing about uh, checking up out of here and eternity, and this thing is getting so close. There's a scripture that, that um, I love, and I've I just been chewing on for the last uh, year. And, you know, it says, Lord, teach me to number my days. And you really want to know what he's saying. He says, when you start to learn to number your days, you're going to stop doing stupid stuff. Because you know your days are numbered. <laughs> but when you ain't numbering your days, you just acting foolishly because you think you got time. You, you, go, you go to a store now and you think, oh, I'm coming out with some bread. And that can be your expiration date. So it's not one of those days where you're like, oh, next Friday we, we got this family reunion with it. The funny thing about this, let me share this. The funny thing about this is that every last one of us in here, we have an a, a, a invisible expiration date attached to your back. The only scary thing about this is you don't know what those numbers are. But it is already attached on your back on when you, your time here is going to expire. So every day you walk and you got this, uh, invis this invisible expiration date on your back saying, Sunday, July 31st. And, you, and we walk around here talking about, oh, I got five years. Just a couple of, uh, uh, for, uh, those of you who don't know, um, um, I... Last, I think, uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, we hear about all the mass shootings and things like that, but what has been hitting home to me was, you know, it's, it's amazing. I had a friend not too long ago, he, he made a post on his, uh, on his page and about an event that he was planning to do, and he was just posting some encouraging things, getting excited about this event. Young... No COVID, no heart disease, no nothing. Did not wake up. So in his mind, he had this event in his future. But there was an a invisible number that he couldn't see. And thank God he knew Jesus. So before you walk out the door today, please re just know. I tell everybody, I tell me and my wife, we have this saying at home, like I, I'll say things like, you know, sometimes we'll get ready to go to sleep and I'll say, hey, babe, if, um, if just, just in case, if, if, if this is my expiration date, I see you over there on the other side. <laughs> you got to, you, we all, it's, it's, it's a point of, for all of us. So for us to act like this ain't happening, I tell you, to me, the Bible calls those people foolish. Wise people prepare. They, they get their insurance together. They're like, listen, one day this thing will happen. So let me, uh, okay, let me cut off all these foolishness around me. Okay, I don't need that in my life. I don't need that in my life. I don't need that in my life because I am numbering my days. Just so y'all know, that ain't the message, but I just want to give y'all a little bread before the real thing. <laughs> All right, so listen, I want you to close your eyes because I'm going to pray. And I'm going to pray that I deliver this package the right way. And I pray that you will really be blessed by what God is going to say. Father, I thank you so much for this word that you're about to speak to us today. And I ask you, Lord God, that you would speak to the heart of every person that is in this building Thank you so much, Lord God, for your presence that's in this building, Lord God. Thank you for those who are online watching. I pray that you would speak to them. Lord God, I pray that you minister to their needs. And Lord God, we're going to leave here edified, changed, and, and completely nourished in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, we are going to go to Philippians chapter 2. We're going to go to uh, Philippians chapter 2. And, and I, I really want... We're going we're gonna to look at um, two scriptures that, for me, has been a game changer. And so when he told me to deliver this package to whoever shows up today and those who are going to be watching, then I know that this is going to be a blessing to you as well. So I'm going to have you look at Philippians chapter 2. We're going to read verse 12 and 13 and 14. All right, so 
I'm going to read this. It says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but not much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Verse 13 says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Verse 14 says, Do all things without murmurings and disputings. I'll go ahead and read verse 15. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Let everybody say amen. amen. Now, I want to start at verse 15 and then work back up to the scripture that I want to uh, kind of deliver the package. Is that verse 15, he gives us a, our role in this generation. Verse 15 is showing what our role in this generation. He says, our role is that we're supposed to shine as lights in this crooked and perverse generation. How many of y'all know our generation is a mess right now? So he says, this is why I left you here. You're here because this generation is so crooked. He said, he said if, if I was just thinking about you, I would take you out of here now because, you know, if I take you out of here now, you don't have to worry about none of this stuff. You don't have to worry about suffering, pain, um, physical pain, emotional pain. You don't have to worry about none of that. So you would be good, but there won't be, there will be less light in the world with your absence. So for that reason, I'm going to keep you here just a little while longer so you can shine. Okay. Now, the reason why he's saying this is because. He understands that the only way that this cricket generation is not going to uh, just explode and go crazy is that there has to be some, uh, some, some light agents in place to keep things kind of still shining. Even when we're seeing all these mass shootings and seeing all this kind of craziness going on, he wants some people here that is still shining in the midst of all this. Okay? So this is why you're chosen. This is why he got you here. Now watch this. So he says, though, in the beginning of verse 15, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst. So that means he wants you in the midst. He don't want you hiding from this crooked generation. He wants you in the midst of them. It sounds something like this. Ye are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. So he says, if the salt has lost its taste, it's good for nothing. So he puts you here so you can change the appetite of what's going on around here. Now, the reason why I share this scripture is because now I'm about to deliver the package that I'm about to, about to share. Because many of you say, well, I'm in this crazy, crooked world. God is getting more evil. I, I don't like all the violence that's going on. The, 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 uh, more, more shootings. The young people's minds is just going. And everybody's just going in the wrong direction. And so what happens is now... We got to go back up to verse 12, 13, and 14 in order for us to be able to fulfill verse 15. Because <laughs> a lot of people read verse 15 and be like, yeah, I'm the light of the world. You know, I'm, I'm a, and, but if we don't do 12, 13, and 14, you might as well forget 15. 15 ain't going to happen. <laughs> so let's look at how we're supposed to do verse 15. So verse 12 says, as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but though, but now much more in my absence. He says, work out. Everybody say work out. work out. Verse 12 says to work out something. Verse 12 is telling us to work out something. I'm going to say it again. Verse 12 is telling us to work out something. So we got to figure out what we're supposed to be working out. He says, your neighbor's salvation. Uh-oh. <laughs> hmm. That's interesting. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Um, work, work, out, work out the community salvation. So, if I was the devil and I knew this scripture, if I knew that I can't get you to sin or do nothing crazy, the, my number one attack on you is to get you so distracted trying to work out United States' salvation and you miss your own. And how can you miss your own? Because you're so distracted doing what he did not tell you to do. 
Mm -mm -mm. So if I can have you focus all your energy over here, you don't have time to work out what you're supposed to be working out. Now, let's go get more deep. <laughs> let's go down. Now, look at this. He says, work it out. Then he says, your own salvation. Salvation. And look at what he says. He didn't say with a laughter. He didn't say with partying. And he said with fear and trembling. Yeah. That means I am responsible for my own soul. And so this fear and trembling is one day I'm going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and my pastor ain't standing next to me. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't going to be you and the pastor walking up to Jesus and saying, uh, okay, Jesus, um, uh, me, you know, I'm here because the pastor, you know, Mr. Pastor, can you please speak to Jesus that I wasn't a faithful member of the church, I tithe. It ain't going to look like that. Pastor, your pastor may be five rows behind you, and he's going to be standing before Christ for his own soul. <laughs> so he says, work it out with fear and trembling because you're the one who got to stand before him alone in the courtroom. So that means all these people who text you 12 o'clock at night and you ain't getting no sleep, and, and they give you all their baggage, and then they go to sleep and you stay up all uh, messed up. You better start telling them, listen, don't call me at the eight. Phone off. Because I'm working out my salvation with fear and trembling. I got to make sure that if I close my eyes tonight, I will stand before him and hear him say, well done. Amen. What good is it for me to make sure all y'all stand before him and hear him well done? And then I say, um, can I make it, God? What good is that? So watch this. I love the airplane because, you know, they will tell you, listen, you know, in case of an emergency, take care of yourself before you. They even said, take care of yourself before you take care of your kids. Because if you don't take care of yourself, you can't help your kids. <laughs> So I need to make sure, I need to know how to work out my own before I can try to work out your own. This is where the fear and trembling comes because I know I'm responsible. I can't put this off on, oh, the, all, all these church folks are hypocrites. Listen, we're in a crooked and perverse generation. <laughs> Just make sure you <laughs> ain't the hypocrite that you complaining about. Lord have mercy. So this Paul is trying to say, everybody take responsibility. Everybody say that. I'm going to take responsibility. You're going to make Bishop Sanders' job so easy if you take responsibility. This, our bishop is a man who is a husband, who have kids, who have grandkids. He has a calling. He, he has hobbies. He has things he want to do. And so he wants to do them. But if you don't know how to work out your own salvation, guess what you're going to want? You're going to want pastor to work it out for you. And while he's trying to go on vacation, he can't even go on vacation. Pastor, can you pray for me? Because if, um, I, 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 I got a job coming up and I need you to pray for me. And he's on the beach. When you could actually tap into the Holy Spirit on the inside of you and say, Holy Spirit, thank you for this job. Why, why snatch all his time? He worked out his own. He's trying to teach you to work out your own. We're still in the beginning. Y'all want more? Okay. All right. Let's go to verse 13. Now watch this. For it is God which worketh in. Everybody say work in. So we saw in verse 12 something we have to work out. In verse 13, we see who the one who works in. So God has a job and we have a job. So let's talk about the two. God's job is to work it in you. Your job is to work it out. And I know you've been tapping up on those old school songs. Work it out, Jesus. Work it out. Get, listen, you better <laughs> listen to them lyrics. That's why it ain't worked out yet because you're supposed to work it out and he's the one who works it in. Mm -mm -mm. 
So how do we work out and how do we work in? What, how does all look? So let me break this down for you. What is he working in? Both the will and the to-do of his good pleasure. I don't know. This may be too deep. Can y'all handle what I'm about to... Yeah. <laughs> all right. This. God says, listen, I'm going to put inside your store, inside your vessel, the will and the to-do of what I want you to do for me. We have been spending years trying to work in us what God is supposed to work in us. That's why people are committing suicide in the church. God's responsibility is to put it in. What is he putting in? What is he putting inside us? His desires for his will for your life. What we've done is we said, Jesus, this is what I want to do for you. And he said, this is not how this thing works. I'm going to put in you the desire. It sounds something like this. Delight thyself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of thine heart. And I know you thought it was your desires, but that is pretty much him taking his desire and he then put it inside you and then you start desiring what he want and then you start to want what he want and he says, now I'm going to give you what I wanted you to want. <laughs> so when you go in prayer and say, Lord, I don't know why I want to that you're birthing this desire in me to want to start a food pantry. That wasn't your desire. He worked that in you. And you thought it was you. <laughs> you know. You know back in the day, you didn't like to talk to people. You knew it. People, if somebody came and rung your doorbell and you didn't know they were coming, you walk to that door with a knife in your hand, like, listen, you better not come in, you better call and text me when you come into my house. Now people ring your doorbell, you, oh, you want, you, where did that desire come from? It ain't come from you. <laughs> he worked something in you because he needs you to work in that area. You see this guy up here with, behind this podium? This guy that y'all looking at, back in the day, everybody say back in the day. Uh, y'all gotta say it, but y'all gotta say it with a thumb. Back in the day. Back in the day, I was throwing house parties. I was living it up, living it out. You wouldn't pay me. I used to, I, I used to always talk about preachers. <laughs> oh, they all phony. I'm in house parties, just doing my thing, just rocking the house, and I'm like, man, those church people, all they want is money. Man, the pastors, they're all pastors. I, I was the number one. And now this morning, I had a desire to teach this word. Where did that come from? Somebody tell me. It was work in me. The problem is many people is trying to do stuff for God that he never worked in them. That's when it'll, it, it, you'll start it and it's like, it's, but when he's working in you, he puts his anointing, he gives you his grace, he gives you his empowerment to do what he put inside you to do. Now watch this. It gets even deeper. He puts inside you his will and to do of his good pleasure. And it gets, it's, you get, it's so intertwined what he's working inside you that it actually starts to make you think it was your decision. <laughs> you start to say things like, I don't know why I feel like I need to go to Walmart. You think that was your conscious working on its own. It, it, this working inside both to will, it's, it's like you now got a roommate in your house. 
And when you go shopping, you don't just shop for yourself no more. You shop for the roommate who live with you now. So before you used to go get get just you know beef chicken and 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 because because it was just you living in that house. But now you got this other roommate that you're conscious, and that other roommate like to eat fish and, and, and veggies. And now when you go to Walmart, you can't just buy what you want because you're conscious of your roommate's appetite. So now you're buying stuff that you never used to buy. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Now you have appetites for things you never used to have an appetite for. It's because your roommate is craving it. So let me give y'all this. My beautiful wife, for those who don't know, we, we, we're about four months, we're approaching four months of bringing a beautiful baby girl to this earth. Woo! Now watch this. My wife loved coffee. She loved coffee. She really loved coffee. I mean, she would drink coffee every day. When that baby arrived, all of a sudden, her appetite for coffee left immediately. She didn't have to go to a deliverance service. <laughs> the changing of the appetite was a sign that something is living in there. So now, everything she's craving is not her desires. That baby there said, I want some ice cream. And guess what? She says, I want some ice cream. <laughs> who's, who's the ice cream for? But guess who's the vessel working it out? I hope y'all see this. So God is putting stuff inside you because he's hungry. And he needs you to feed it. Wow. <laughs> so in John it says, he who have his seed in him will not sin or practice sin. Because the seed is saying you can't do this. This is too deep for y'all. <laughs> so when you used to curse and all of a sudden you, you about to, it's about to come out your mouth, you say, hey, don't pat yourself on the back. That's the baby saying, I, I don't crave that no more. So one of the signs that you have the Holy Spirit inside you is that the Holy Spirit's appetite is going to start to tell you, I need prayer. I want to pray. I have an appetite to study the word. Where did that come from? I never used to read the Bible like this. I have an appetite to want to go on a fast. I never used to want to fast. I like food too much. <laughs> Just confession time, sorry. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I'm getting these spiritual desires. I'm getting these desires now to not retaliate. I'm getting these desires now all of a sudden to pray for those who despitefully use me. I'm getting these desires to start praying for my enemies. Where did this come from? Ah, the seed is in there. So when he says work, God is the one that working in you, both the will and the to do of his good pleasure. That's why he says, I need you to work it out with fear and trembling. So watch this. Because my wife is so conscious of our beautiful baby, is she's so conscious of it, it even changed the way she walk. I'm going to use my mask to wipe the sweat. <laughs> Her walk is different because of the baby. <laughs> and you know what's so crazy? One day she ate something. And when she ate it, she was like, mm-mm, mm-mm. And she ran to the bathroom and she just spit it all out. She was like, no, the baby don't like that. Have any of y'all ever been watching something on TV and something in you was like, I can't watch this. 
This is you around a group of people and they just gossiping and something you like. Yeah. I, I gotta go. Oh, you know what? I'm, my doctor calling me. You just oh, leave. <laughs> Have you ever been at a like a family picnic or something and they just start acting a fool and all of a sudden I, I, I just I just need to go home. You don't know why that's well I know. The seed in you <laughs> is rejecting that stuff you're putting in. Mm, 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 mm. Now watch this, verse 13, for it is God which working in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now watch this, he says, do all things without murmurings and disbelief. Now let's come back to verse 15. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation of whom you shine as lights in the world. He's saying now you can do 15 because you know you're pregnant. So again, my wife is very careful about where she go, what she eat. Even certain smells makes her feel nausea at times. It's the baby doing that. It's not her. So when the Holy Spirit is really in there working in you to do of his good pleasure, I am telling you, and, and the thing about the coffee that blew my mind was that, you know, there, and all of us have this testimony. That there's been areas in your life that it's like, man, once you gave your heart to Christ, it was like, bam. You never went back. And you're like, what was that? Then there's some areas that it's like you take two steps forward. <laughs> and then it's like, why can't I get rid of this one like I got rid of them cigarettes? Or why, why can't I get rid of this one? Can I, can I help y'all? And I'm going to end on this. I'm going to help you with this because really what's happening is you in that area is telling God, I know you're working it in me. And the reason why you know he worked it in you because you have a consciousness that I shouldn't be doing this. That's a sign that you, he worked something in you. Because <laughs> every time you do it, you feel bad. That feeling bad is a sign he worked something in. The working out part is the struggle. And this is why it's a struggle. It's because... When you're ready to work it out, that old man just say, you know what? I've been living in this house by myself for 20 years. I know what I like to eat. I know how I want my couch to be. I know how I want my furniture to be. I know where I want this plant to be because I've been living here all by myself. But here come my roommate to share the same space that I was with by myself. And my roommate says things like, can we move the couch over here? <laughs> now watch this. You can, it could be as simple as, okay, let's try something different. Let's move it. And then there's harmony with the roommates. So that little fight that you're going through on the side is you telling the, your roommate, I don't like the couch over there. <laughs> Jesus is like, um, can I just move this? Up? Don't touch that. But, but I know that now I live in your house. I just want to, I just want to, I, I know if you put the couch here. But Jesus, I know what I. You see what's happening? He's in the house, he just don't have control. <laughs> so yes, you're saved, but he ain't controlling the, the saved house yet. Because the saved house has been living in there alone for a long time with stubborn ways saying, I need the picture right here. Don't touch my picture. Jesus, you touch my picture. I'm... And Jesus like, listen, I know what's best for your house. You don't need this closet full of shoes no more. I got new shoes. I can help you with not nah, that. Nah. I bought them on sale at Macy's. You don't touch them. <laughs> you only wore them once every five years and you still got them. They just hang it. He like, Look, you don't need this. And you having a fight with your roommate. <laughs> so I'm going to end with a story that I didn't make this story up. I heard it 
So I give credit to whoever uh, came up with the story, but I think it brings all this in beautifully. In the story, and many of you may have heard it before, it shared about how um, this guy was at this, his house and somebody came and banged on the door. Boom, 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 boom. Let me in. And the guy opened the door and the, and the devil and the demons came in his house, started wrecking the house, and I could be butchering the story, but I will probably promise you I'll get you the point. And the demon just butchering the house, and then, and then when the demons get upstairs, in this little closet, he wouldn't touch the closet, but he touched everything else in the house. And so after the demon just, read, just went through the whole house and did everything, the demon left. And then when the demon left, the, the, the guy went to Jesus who was in the house. <laughs> Thank you, sir. The guy who was with Jesus who was in the house said, Jesus, why didn't you help me? You saw what happened. Why didn't you help me? And Jesus said, you only gave me the closet. That's the only place I have authority in this house. So the demon comes back. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Knocks on the door. The guy opened the door and the demon just going to start knocking everything down on the first floor. After the demon left, the guy went to Jesus. Jesus, why did you let that happen? And Jesus said, you kept me upstairs. You wouldn't let me come downstairs. So the guy goes back, and now the guy says, okay, Jesus, come, come downstairs, please, please. Just, I can't take this demon coming back. So the demon comes back, knocks again, <laughs> and Jesus is downstairs, but he's, you know, he got the back area, whatever. So the demon comes into the living room, and the demon is like, you know, uh, you know, he's just throwing the couch and stuff over. The demon leaves and the man says, Jesus, now come on, I brought you downstairs. Why? What is going on? Why can't you fight this? Why is this such a struggle? And Jesus says, you did, you did get me downstairs, but I don't have that living room. And the last point was, the demon come knocking on the door. And I think the guy finally got it. And, then, and, and on this one, the guy said, Jesus, can you go answer the door for me? And, and Jesus opened the door. The demon said, sorry, wrong house. And the demon left. That is our problem. That is our problem. He's in there, but you got him locked up in a cellar somewhere, only for access when it's convenient. So when he moved in, he moved in with his luggage. All of his benefits is in that house with you. The problem is you put his suitcases, the suitcase of peace, the suitcase of joy, the suitcase of love is all locked up in the closet with him in your house that you won't let him come out till dinner time. So he's worked it in, but the working out problem, we still got a bit too much control of the door. So the areas that you don't have no, no struggles, the area feels like, man, that part is just gone. I put my life on it. You gave Jesus access to that room. <laughs> Who in here would like this morning? It's, 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 it's going to be a risky thing you're about to commit to. But who in here this morning really want Jesus to start opening your doors? Amen. Just five of us. Okay, good. <laughs> That's fine. Five is good. Good. <laughs> Five is go. Five ain't gonna have a lot of stress. Five of us is gonna be living from a place of, of, of peace. The other ones, <laughs> we'll see you next Sunday. You'll do the routine again and go back and wonder why, Jesus. 
I'm just telling you, that is the package I was supposed to send to you today. He, he needs you to work this thing out. And, 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 and the workout part is for you to get to the place where you say, you know what, I'm done. I, 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 I really have been controlling this house. I need, where do you want this couch, Jesus? I really don't care if you, if you want the couch in the kitchen at this point. <laughs> because you're, just admit it, your way ain't working. Admit it. Just admit it. The quicker you admit it, the quicker he'll start answering the door. That's what, it, that's what he says. He gives grace to the humble. You know what the humble is? Humble means I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to decorate. <laughs> So Jesus, can you please do this? I, I'm a hot mess. And Jesus says, I'm going to give you grace. Let me, I'm about to be your master decorator. I'm going to hook this house up. Because you're now letting the roommate get involved. <laughs> so the scripture that says 943 Jefferson Avenue is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Have y'all read that in the scripture, right? It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Y'all never read that? Come on. I can show It's right. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 says, 943 Jefferson Avenue is the temple of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Who's the temple of the Holy Spirit? Oh. So we are the new houses. Hmm. Wow. Y'all sure about that? You 100% sure? So, why do we pick up the paper in this house but don't pick up the paper in our house? <laughs> oh, no, don't, don't talk in the house of God. You should be saying that to your own house. <laughs> the Holy Spirit want to talk and you talking over him in your real house. So if he's really the temple, yes, we want to respect this. But I am telling you, when Jesus come back, this building is not going. This building is not going to stand before the Lord talk about, yeah, I house 900 people uh, every Sunday. You know, can I get my crown? <laughs> that would be cool, but it's not going to happen. He like, I want that one right there. I want to live in that body right there because in that body I can do some amazing, ooh, if I could just move that right over here, if I can help them in that area and just ship that, oh my God, I, I, I can work my will to do some great things in that house. If they could just give me the keys, let me answer the door, I, can, I will make sure I can hook that place up, but I just need them to say, yes, Lord. So this week, the reason why I said by the end of this week, you got something amazing coming is because you're about to work out something that you already had possessed on the inside you, which is your roommate. You go, you go do a major makeover this week. <laughs> so everybody in here, as, as, uh, as um, uh, Brother Collins uh, bless us with some amazing worship music, as many of us in here who want to say yes, who really want to say, okay, Lord, um, I've been doing, I, I, yes, you are living in me, but I have not given you the keys. Can you please open the door from, I, I'm tired. I, I've been opening the door too much and it is, I shouldn't be feeling like this with you living in here. <laughs> what would make a man sing praises in prison? What would make a man say, I'll die upside down for you? These people have worked out something. So everyone who want to give total access to your roommate today, I just wanted to take a moment in our personal, personal time, I'm going to give you a personal moment to really, because it's your house, you have to be accountable for your house. So. I mean, I can lay hands on you, pray for you, all that, but that's not going to do the work. 
that, that can encourage you, but guess what? You still gotta be the one to go home and say, here, Jesus. So I'm gonna give you the time to do that. So I'm gonna open, I ask everybody to stand who wants to say yes, Lord. Who's really like, I'm, I'm tired of keeping Jesus in the basement. No more, Jesus. You, you about to start answering every, every door. Every time the doorbell ring, I want you to go to it, Jesus. And so what I want you to do in your own personal time and those who are watching online as well, right where you are, I want you right now to close your eyes, talk to your roommate and say, God, you brought some suitcases in here with me. You brought some things in, in this house with me. You want to release these gifts and talents and this anointing, your, your purpose in my life, but I have locked you up in the closet and I've been answering all the doors. I've been answering all the phones. I don't let you decorate, but today I'm gonna to give you full access. So if this is you, I want you to just close your eyes, lift up your hands, and just talk to him for a couple of minutes. I'll give you a couple of minutes. I don't wanna uh, distract you because I want this to be personal between you and your roommate. So open your mouth and talk to him. Go ahead, and I want you to do it at home as well. Just open up your mouth right now. Everybody just talk to him. And those who wanna to come to the altar, if you wanna come and kneel at the altar and tell Jesus, Lord Jesus, I. I, I, I submit to you, if you want to kneel, if that's, if that's going to make you feel better, please, the altar is open. Hallelujah.